morning, Redemption Kids. Pastor Robin here. Planty is hanging out somewhere. Today, before we get started in our lesson, I want you to do something. I want you to find a piece of paper, and I want you to find crayons, and I want you to find a pencil, and I want you to draw the future, 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 future. That's right, I want you to draw what you think the future will look like for you. Maybe you have pets, maybe you have a family, maybe you have a house, maybe you have a car. What does your future look like? I'm gonna give you some time to draw that Get those supplies, some paper, pencil, marker, crayons, whatever you need and draw the future, whatever that looks like for you. And so go ahead and press pause, draw that, and when you're ready, press play again, and we'll continue our lesson, and you'll know why I asked you to draw the future, 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 future. Well, I hope you were able to draw out the future, but you know what? We can't really predict the future, right? But when we think about what will happen in our lives, it's natural to hope for good things and many blessings. Today, we will hear about a time a king who feared God's people tried to get another man to predict bad things for them. What do you think God thought about that? Well, We'll learn about that soon. Who remembers our big picture question and our answer? Let's say it together. What does sin mean? Or in other words, what does it mean to sin? And this is the answer. What is sin? Uh, to sin is to uh, think, speak, or behave in any way that goes against God or his commands. That means that sin is something that affects us in many ways. It's not just doing something wrong. It's also believing or saying things about God that are not true. We have sin in our lives and we cannot escape it. And so we need to be rescued from it. That brings us to the people of Israel. A few weeks ago, we learned that the 12 scouts were sent to examine the promised land. 10 did not trust God and led the people away from God. But remember, Joshua and Caleb trusted God to give his people the promised land. And then last week, uh, we learned that the people sinned again. And this time by believing that God would not provide for them. And by saying ungrateful things about the food he had already provided. So when dangerous snakes, remember the snake story? Dangerous snakes came as a punishment for their sin. God told his people to look at the bronze snake to be healed. This week, we will learn about a man who was hired to curse God's people. And our story is called Balaam and Balak. Balaam and Balak. Open your Bibles to Numbers 22 through 24. And so this time, I want you to go and run and get your Bible. Go ahead. Go get your Bible. Go ahead. I'll be here. Planty, how you doing? Yeah, well, I'm waiting for them to get their Bible. Yeah, yeah, they should have their own. Yeah. Oh, if they don't have one, I'm happy to provide them. Yes. So what have you been drinking nowadays? Water? Yeah. All right. You think they got their Bibles yet? I think so, too. All right, I hope you got your Bibles. God's Word is so important. We need it. We need to be in it as much as we can because we need this truth. And so open up to Numbers, which is the 
fourth book of the Bible, Numbers 22 through 24. This is the story of Balaam and Balak. The Israelites came to the edge of the promised land. They camped near the Jordan River in the plains of Moab. By now, all the previous generations had died except for Moses, Joshua, and Caleb. Uh, Balak, the king of Moab, saw the Israelites and was afraid. If the Israelites moved into Moab, they could take over. King uh, Balak sent his messengers to a man named Balaam. The king said, come and curse the Israelites so that I might be able to defeat them. The king believed that whoever uh, Balaam uh, uh, cursed became cursed, and whoever he blessed became blessed. When Balaam went with the king's officials, God sent an angel to stop Balaam. Balaam could not see the angel, but guess what? His donkey could. That's right, his donkey could see it. Three times the angel stood in the way and three times the donkey stopped. First, the donkey went off the road. Then she ran into a wall. And finally, she crouched. Balaam didn't understand why the donkey was stopping. He hit the donkey with his stick, so God gave the donkey the ability to speak. That's right, the donkey started to talk. What have I done to you that made you beat me three times, the donkey said. Balaam said, you made me look like a fool. God then allowed Balaam to see the angel and Balaam said, I was wrong. I didn't know you were trying to stop me. If you don't think I should go, I'll return home right now. The angel said, it's all right for you to go. But you must only say what I tell you. When he arrived, Balaam told the king, I will only say what God tells me to say. Balaam told the king that God had blessed the Israelites. And so Balaam blessed them too. In fact, he blessed them three times. The king was angry. I brought you here to curse the Israelites, but you have blessed them. What's going on? Go home. Before Balaam went home, he had a special message for the king. Balaam went home. He, he, said, uh, he said that one day the Lord would be born to the people of Israel. The message was a special promise. I see him, but not now. I perceive him, but not near. A star will call, come from Jacob. And a scepter will arise from Israel. After Balaam has said these things, he finally went home. Well, how would you react if your pet started talking to you? Isn't it strange that Balaam didn't say, Whoa, you can talk? Or anything like that? He was so focused on how angry he felt, he did not even stop to wonder how the donkey spoke. See, God was using the donkey to get Balaam's attention and change his plans. Balaam was traveling to see Balak, the enemy of God's people. But Balak hired Balaam, to curse God's people, but God had a very, very different plan. 
You see, even though Balak sinned by going against God and his people, God commanded Balaam to bless his people. And guess what? That's exactly what Balaam did. Balaam proclaimed a blessing over God's people, and God revealed some things about the coming rescuer. See, Balaam's message meant that the rescuer was coming from Jacob's family and that he would be a king. And we know that Jesus is the rescuer from Jacob's family. And he is the king of kings. Even in the middle of our sinful choices, God is still in control, right? Balaam encountered God and it drastically changed his plans. Drastically means it totally changed his plans. See, when we encounter Jesus, it changes our whole lives. Right? Balaam could not curse God's people. God had blessed the Israelites, and so Balaam blessed them too. And then 1,400 years after Balaam announced God's promise, a baby was born named Jesus. See, God sent Jesus to bless the whole world by rescuing people from sin. I know you probably have questions. And guess what? We have a video just for questions from kids. Check that out. Right? How can we serve God each day? That's a great question. Check out those videos posted on the site. Remember our key passage. Does anyone remember it? It's from Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. This is what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Now try to memorize that verse because I promise you it's going to be a good verse for you to remember. Trust God. That means that, that God will lead us away from sin and towards Jesus if we trust God with all of our heart and ask Him to make our paths straight. Because we cannot deal with our sin on our own, right? Right? But through Jesus, we can be forgiven and made alive in God. Because when we trust in our own understanding, it only leads us into more trouble. Well, thanks for joining for today's lesson. There's some activities for you to fill out. Make sure you guys do that. Uh, there's some activities and, of course, there's discussion. Um, let's talk about the lesson. There's some questions that I put up on you uh, on the site for you. And so you could uh, ask those questions, uh, maybe from a parent or from a, an older sibling, and talk about how amazing God is. He used a donkey to talk to somebody in this lesson. There's some fun videos for you to watch, some animated videos that explain the lesson. Check that out. And there's some fun activities for you to do as well this week. Well, as always, know that God loves you so much and that God's word is for us to understand and understand who God is. So take some time to do those activities, uh, do those uh, 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 discussion questions, and uh, of course, watch those videos as well. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Planty and I are always uh, happy and excited when you can join us. We'll see you guys next week. Bye.